Welcome to the last edition of the Roundtable. I'm here with Alex Wallace. Hello. And, um, first and foremost, we've taken a long break from sports, so uh, I say we jump right into the uh, whole Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski moving to uh, Tampa Bay. What are your thoughts, Alex? You know, it's to be honest, I wasn't really surprised that Tom Brady was going to Tampa. Um, I was surprised. I was a bit surprised they didn't go to San Diego because Tampa doesn't really have like a good marketing team and they're not really the most popular NFL team. But um, now that Gronk is down there too, um, I feel like the temp- Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a team to look out for in the future. Yeah, to be honest, I thought that Brady, in my personal opinion, I think that Brady should have retired rather than pack up and leave New England after, you know, 20 years, six Super Bowls, and all those titles and hardware that he brought home. So I think that packing up and leaving is just him trying to prove a point that he can win without Belichick. And then I think Grant coming out of retirement was kind of, I don't know, I I thought that was a low blow to Pat's fans, considering that he kind of teased us all last regular season about um, people speculating that he was going to come out of retirement and uh, come back and play for New England. So for him to just come out of nowhere and go right to Tampa Bay is kind of, Kind of annoying for Pats fans, I guess, but you know it is what it is. It should be interesting to see if uh, they can actually have a winning record down there. Do you think? Do you think that um, Tampa Bay can have a winning record, and uh, do you think Gronk can play without becoming injured? Because he's had um, history tied with injuries. Yeah, so I mean, it all just depends on how Gronk has been like staying fit through the last season. I mean, I don't know how well he's. I know he dropped like twenty pounds or something like that. So I don't think he'd be doing as much blocking as he would in New England, but I mean, they have, Tampa Bay has some pretty good wide receivers, and I think that that's what Tom Brady really wanted, and um, now that he has some good options, I think he, I think, I wouldn't be surprised if they have a winning record, but I don't think they're going to go too far in the playoffs if they do have a winning record. Yeah, I definitely don't think they're a Super Bowl team, but I think Brady's happy with uh, Mike Evans as a weapon, and some other studs that they got over there, but in my opinion, I think it comes down to the coaching at the end of the day. I mean, you could have the best lineup, best whatever, but, you know, if you don't got a coach that knows what he's doing, then it's going to be tough to win. Mm, I don't know who their coach is off the top of my head. but I don't either, but, you know, I don't think anybody's like Belichick. So, yeah. Um, so where do you think this leaves uh, New England? Do you think we can live without uh, – win without Brady? And, uh, I, feel like we're, yeah. I feel like we'll definitely be a playoff team. I just don't think that will go far, to be honest. I mean, I heard – um rumors of like Andy Dalton coming to the Patriots which to be honest I'd be kind of happy with I mean it it would be kind of like a move like Ryan um Tannehill I feel like it'd be good for Andy Dalton to get out of the Bengals because they're one of the worst organizations in the league so I think if he comes to to New England he'd have a much better um team and much better organization to work with yeah well actually recently the Cowboys picked up Andy Dalton I'm almost positive so um I think he's going to back up Dak Prescott, which is kind of unfortunate for him because either way, yeah, I think he would have wound up a backup because, you know, Joe Burrow just got drafted first round, first pick overall to the Bengals. Mm. Um, stood out at LSU. And yeah. Then, you know, the Cowboys got their quarterback in Dak Prescott. But for me, I wish the Pats took a quarterback in the draft, whether that was Jordan Love, Jake Fromm. Um, I think Jake Fromm would have suited the offense real well. But yeah. he signed a couple undrafted free agents who are quarterbacks. We'll see you know, if they can compete with Stidham. But as it looks like right now, I think Stidham's going to be our starting cue. But I don't know. I think the Pats might might have a tough time trying to make the playoffs this year. But I I, I have faith in Belichick and, you know, Ed, Edelman's loyal. So it should be interesting to see what happens. Mm. What do you think of uh, Tua going to um, – I forget where he went off the top of my head, but how do you yeah. think he'll do? So um, – so Tua goes to Miami. That, that's huge because Miami drafted, you know, a ton of O-linemen, some extra weapons for him offensively. And um, I think that they're rebuilding, and I think it's looking pretty promising given this past draft because they got a ton of picks in the first few rounds by trading and whatnot. So I think that they're going to be, you know, a decent team. And that coach, he used to be in the Patriots system. So um, – I think that former Patriots coaches have a history of giving, you know, the Patriots a tough time when they play them. Uh, example, Mike Ravel of the uh, Titans, you know, beating us last year. So mm-hmm. I think the Dolphins are going to be pretty well off, but we'll see what happens. Um, so moving on to other sports, 
that have slowly been coming back given the coronavirus pandemic. Um, have you been watching any of the soccer, the golf that's like starting up again? I've been watching a bit of the soccer. The Bundesliga, the German league just started up last weekend. And um, yeah, it was kind of weird seeing without fans, to be honest, because that's mostly like, because I, f- I don't know, I feel like it's just different without fans, but like, um, I feel yeah. like it's players are going to have a hard time adapting if they didn't train over cor- or over the quarantine break. Um, but uh, yeah, and the Prem- English Premier League was is supposed to come back. But interesting with the Premier League, they they had this plan to um, move the Premier League to Australia because I think Australia was um, one of the countries that had like very few cases and now is back open. And it would have been interesting to see the Premier League in Australia, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But yeah, I mean, personally, I haven't been watching you know any of the sports that have come back because they just. It didn't really interest me that much. I mean, I know NASCAR has been coming back, and they recently had a race. And, um, you know, I think motorsports are probably your best bet in staying safe right now. I know Formula One's trying to come back. Yeah. Did you hear about in Formula One, um, Vettel leaving Ferrari? Yeah. And, uh, Carlos Sainz is moving to Ferrari, and Ricardo goes to McLaren. That's insane. I yeah. Thought, I thought Ricardo could have gone to Ferrari, you know. He's getting old, and I think it would be cool to see him have that last shot again into a winning car rather than going to another midfield team. But um, I wonder where Vettel's going to go. It should be interesting. He might just retire if he doesn't get, you know, the Mercedes seat or something like that. Yeah, who would – if um, Vettel doesn't go to Mercedes, who do you think would take that Mercedes seat? Um, I think I think they're loyal to Hamilton. I think they'll sign him back. They might, they might just retain Bottas if they want to. Mm. Um, but maybe they'll pick up, you know, somebody who isn't in the circuit right now. You know, um, there was talk about Fernando Alonso coming back and taking a seat, but yeah, his days might be over. So yeah, I don't think Fernando Alonso would work well with Hamilton, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, too much, too much uh, bad blood there. I think. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Ricardo going to McLaren will be interesting. Having um, Lando Norris and uh, Daniel Ricciardo team yeah, up. Those guys are goons. It's going to be a funny team to watch. Yeah. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if um, McLaren do make a comeback, though. I feel like they're starting, yeah, to, get, they starting to get it together again. Last year. Yeah. Sorry? They showed promising signs last year with Carlos making a podium in Brazil and stuff like that. Mm. So, um, I think they're fighting to get back on top where they were. Yeah, and it'll be interesting because if Ferrari, since Ferrari gets signs now, I wonder if they'll have a better chance of um, winning the um, winning the entire thing. And now signs paired with Leclerc. Yeah, those are two good drivers, two good young drivers. You know, Leclerc's twenty two and Signs is twenty five, so they got um, they got a lot of talent for the foreseeable future. Mm. So um, moving moving on to you know American sports. Um, do you think we'll see any of the NBA, NHL, or MLB this summer? Um, I don't know. It's tough to say. Uh, I know I heard plans of like the MLB coming back yeah. on like June first or something like that, but I don't think it'll happen on June first. Yeah. Um, we talking about doing like divisional play or something like that, like splitting the yeah. teams the pools and just playing that way, which should be interesting to see. But I think they're talking about you know having some sort of spring training period. For the guys to have before they just jump right back into it but um i think the nba if i'm not mistaken i think they might have suspended the rest of the season i don't know but, but um i think the nhl is trying to make a comeback but um if not it should be interesting to see who they give the championship to i mean it looks like it's supposed to be the bruins given that they have the most amount of points but i don't think anybody wants to win that way so yeah it'll be interesting but only time will tell what, what will happen yeah so um i guess to wrap things up um what have you missed the most about um sports like it's been so long without them so um have you been watching like any any reboots or any like old flashback games stuff like that um i've been watching a few of like the old champions league final soccer games um that's really it what i've been watching but um yeah i do miss the champions league a lot because i remember that's the one thing i like would watch every single week whenever it was on and yeah so that's probably the one thing i miss the most what about you um i know nesson nesson's been playing reboots of uh old red sox games um 
some of the Yankees games, uh, some 2013 games, like the ALDS against the Tigers. Mm. Um, those games were crazy. So uh, it's been nice to see some of those. But I just miss, you know, having a baseball game to watch every day. You know, I feel like the Red Sox are always on at some point of the day. So, you know, it's something to do, something to pass the time, watch the Red Sox. Um, but, you know, other sports, you know, especially Formula One, you know, basketball, especially hockey. You know, this is supposed to be a really exciting time in hockey. So yep. I've missed I missed all of that. You know, it's been really boring without, you know, live sports to watch. So Yeah. So um I think that'll do it for this last edition of the round table. Um special thanks to everyone who made this possible, all the people behind the scenes, people behind the cameras. Um it means a lot to all of us here. And uh it's been an awesome year doing the round table. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, thank you so much. Um Mr. Sweeney here, teacher. You guys did a great job during the whole the whole um, the whole time. So proud of y'all, and uh, thank you for ending our season on a high note.